Happy New Year! Welcome to 2021. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to everyone who's usually here and to anyone who's new. My name is Alita and I just come on here and I share prophetic words that the Lord gives me through the dreams that he gives me. And before I get into the word again, I just want to say happy, happy, happy New Year. I am so excited for 2021. Um, I know that a lot is going to happen this year, just like a lot happens every year. It's always just nice to have this fresh feeling it's like this is like the biggest monday like the first of january on any year is like the monday of all mondays if you get what i'm trying to say anyway um yeah i hope you guys have just a, a wonderful year this year no matter what may come we know that um things are going to happen but that's okay and you know there's going to be some bad things there are going to be some good things as well and they're going to be some bland things so whatever it is just I just, I just, I just pray that it's a beautiful year for you um, of just growth, just lots of growth. I think that's the key thing, especially in your relationship with the Lord. So, um, yeah, this is going to be a word based on two dreams that I had on December thirtieth, twenty twenty. Um, these dreams were similar in nature um, on a specific um, theme. I guess you can call it that. Uh, so I'll just share the first, I think I'll just share both dreams and then I'll get into what the Lord was saying about them. So in the first dream, I just remember just being on a journey with my family. We were just, uh, we were being taken on a journey by someone. Um, he was driving us and he was yeah, basically leading us where we needed to go. And I remember being in this like transitional space. We got to this place where, you know, things were happening, but it was quite transitional. And I uh, went and um, went to the to some side road with my sister and I needed to use the restroom. And I saw this little like area where there was like a bush and I was like, you know, I'm so desperate. I need to <laughs> I need to use the restroom now. Um, it was for number one and I remember going there and there was like these puddles of water like these little ponds but they were not that clean and then I realized oh I shouldn't have come here and then I knew that I had to get out of there and as I did that because I knew that I had to get out of there because there were snakes I saw that the snakes were there but they were dead and as I did that started to uh, run away because I was so worried about the snakes that's a key thing they came to life and when they did that, you know, I started to like elevate. I was like flying and I was like speaking God's word. And, you know, it was like zapping them and zapping them. So it's like my sister and I were just running, flying. And um, we got to this place of safety, if I can call it that. But even while I was there, I was still so worried about these snakes and they were gone. They were not pursuing me anymore. Um, but I was still so paranoid and so worried. So that was the first dream. In the second dream, I was here at home and I was locking up the doors in uh, the sunroom. The sunroom faces the backyard. So when I was doing that, I was just so worried about what if someone comes from the backyard? What if a burglar comes? What if a burglar comes? And I just kept thinking this and I kept thinking it over and over again. Like I was so paranoid about it. Like what if a burglar comes? Oh my goodness, I hope it doesn't happen. Just this focus on this burglar. And it happened. I just saw someone coming from the backyard. They look like such a, a raggedy burglar and I ran into um, the main part of the house I was with my sister again and um, I was like we should lock this door because we have a, a passage door that we can lock then I realized no um, and my children were in the house by the way and I realized that no um, you know this burglar is coming in like he's he's found a way to come in through the back door so I went to deal with this burglar first thing I noticed about this burglar is that he was blind and he couldn't really see what what he could take he couldn't really see what he could do and I didn't want him to know about my children being in the house I didn't want him to know that you know there was a passage door that he can go through so I was like um we were physically tackling him I phoned 10 triple one which is the 911 of South Africa they were not much help and I had to tackle this um this burglar, my sister and I had to tackle this burglar. My sister came with like a spray, trying to do like a may spray, uh, makeshift type of thing. But this guy was already blind, so that had no impact. I had to physically beat this guy down and I was holding him down. And he was just in a lot of distress and pain, just didn't have much power. And that was the end of the dream. So what is the Lord saying to us through these dreams? 
Um, basically shift your focus. We have been on a very personal journey with him, a journey of personal development and growth in the things of the Lord, in the things of the Spirit. And he has taken us on this journey for a while now. It's been a few years. Some of it will refer some of us refer to it as the wilderness experience or the wilderness um what's the other word that people like to use? I forgot, so we're moving on from that. <laughs> wilderness season. <laughs> so um We've been through that. It's been years of that. And it's like because we've been through that, we are almost just paranoid. There's this paranoia. And our focus right now needs to shift. We need to stop looking for, um, you know, demons under every rock. We need to stop looking for what's the enemy going to do next. Because... Okay, let's go to the first dream. In the first dream, you know, I was there was this whole journey and God was just showing that this was part of the journey like that we've been on, that I've been on, that you've been on. I didn't do the disclaimer. Ooh, what a way to start the new year. Guys, let's quickly do this disclaimer. Not every prophetic word is meant for everyone. Please, please, guys, that's so important. This word is for a specific group of people. It's not for everyone. That's so important because sometimes people will come on here and they'll listen to this word and think this is for me, but they're in the their wilderness season. They're in the start of their wilderness season or they're just at a different point. And then they're wondering why are these things not manifesting in my life? Why are your prophetic words not coming to pass? Not every prophetic word is meant for everyone. That's key. Please take it to the Lord if you believe it's meant for you. And for some of you, this could be confirmation of something that the Lord has already spoken to you. He's told you about this and um, he's just confirming it through me. Again, I still encourage you to pray about it. Let the Lord confirm or let the Lord answer any questions that you may have because I don't have the answers to those questions. Okay, now looking at the first dream, um, God was saying how we've been on this journey, right? And um, he's been leading us. It's like Jesus has been leading us on this journey and he's been taking care of us and showing us the way. Um, we thought that we've known, we know which way to go, but you know, he was like going in ways that we didn't understand until we began to understand what he was doing in our lives. And we've been in a transitional space for a while now and it's like, this is the end of the transition. For a lot of you, it has already ended. Doors are opening. Doors have opened. For some of you, it's ending in this uh, time. And God is saying, be careful not to be um, trying to kind of... We all have to live a life of repentance, right? That's very key because every day we are sinning out here. Nobody is perfect. We didn't go through our wilderness experience and um, be refined for the purpose of us being made like perfect in terms of we never sin, we never do anything wrong. That would be religious. We are constantly in need of the, the cleansing blood of Jesus to just wash away those sins daily, daily. Not a single day goes by that we don't need that blood. So um, me needing to use the restroom, it's like a releasing of toxins. It's like this continuous repentance process that needs to happen. But um, what, what God was showing is that be careful not to always think that every time there's something uh, negative or you feel like, okay, I need to repent or I've done this and I need to repent. I must have opened a door for a demon. Oh my goodness. You know, things are going to be bad. I know that, um, you know, there's this, the enemy is going to grab a hold of this. God is saying that he is protecting you. You are so protected in this new season, right? And you don't need to focus on what the demons are doing. The snakes in the dream um, really represent more than anything, lies and slander and gossip that has um, come up about you. And what God is saying is that those things have been put to rest. Those things are dead. The effects of those words, the effects that people were trying to get um, by um, speaking against your name is no longer active. It cannot affect your life anymore. But if you provoke it, if you are focused on those things, if you are paranoid and worried about um, that, you know, there's all of this, there's all of these people against you and they're speaking against you, you are bringing all of that back to life. And then on another tangent or on another side of things, um, 
it's like God was showing you that you've been through that process of dealing with all of that. Those things have been put to death. Those words have no power over your life. That part where we got to this place of safety and the snakes weren't there anymore. You had dealt with them. I had dealt with them in the dream. I had zapped them with the word of God. God is saying that it's been dealt with. So don't keep looking back over your shoulder, looking for the way things used to be. Like I know that so-and-so you know, speaking about me, gossiping about me, and this is the effect it has on my life. Let that go. It's a new focus. You need to shift how you're thinking about yourself, how you are seeing yourself. You are a powerful child of God, and your words have so much power and meaning. So use them wisely is what the Lord is speaking to us today. He's saying, don't be paranoid. Shift your focus. Focus on Him. In the second dream, what God was trying to show us is that, um, sorry, my child distracted me like I was just watching him walk across and I'm like, what's the second dream again? Okay, got it. So what God is saying is, again, watch out for your thoughts. What are you thinking? Are you constantly worried about what's the enemy going to do? What's the enemy going to do? Um, he's going to do something. I know he's going to do something. This word says that as a man thinks, so is he. You are manifesting an attack over your life. You're actually manifesting things that are unnecessary. There's no need for that burglar to come through. I didn't have to see that burglar, but I just kept thinking it and kept thinking, what if a burglar comes? And I kept looking out the window and expecting it and expecting it. I had such an expectation of this thing to happen, and it happened. God is saying, what are you expecting in this season? What are you thinking? What are you manifesting with your thinking? Because... The enemy is actually going to take this and use it as a strategy against you. He's going to try and distract you from focusing on where your focus should be. Your focus should be on the Lord. Your focus should be on what he's called you to. Your focus should be on understanding that you have been groomed. You have been refined. You, ha you are ready for this moment. You're ready to shift into your new and you can't bring the old thought patterns with you. You have been transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you need to stop being paranoid because that paranoia will bring things to pass. It will allow the enemy to um, try and, and, and shift your focus and try and derail you and keep you focused on the wrong thing. Now that burglar was just such a, a weak burglar. He couldn't see. He had no power in him. But I gave him power by expecting him to come and I don't want to really say I gave him power it's like I manifested that um that burglary in the dream and God is saying that you have authority you have authority not to to manifest these things not to let them come to pass I called 10 triple one and they didn't help me because you have authority he's given you authority over these things and he's saying take control don't let the enemy dupe you into thinking that there's a constant attack happening all the time. He probably is trying to attack, but don't focus on that. He's got nothing on you. He can't. God is protecting you in this time. I want to see if there's anything specific I wanted to say before I move on to the verses that the Lord gave me. Um, Focus on him. Let him perform the miracles in your life. It's on him now. He's brought you so far. You've had to do certain things. There was a lot of doing that you had to do because you were being trained and you were being, um, you know, groomed for this time. He is the star of the show. It's about glorifying him. So whatever it is that he's doing in your life, he's going to open the doors. He's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. You may think that the next best step is to do this or to go in that direction. It seems like the right thing to do, but it may not be what God wants. He may be t sending you a different way to get to the destination. That is very important. you got to be in tune with him. So the focus is to keep your focus on him. That is the key thing. In my first videos in 2020, early on in January, the message was get closer to the Lord. It's 2021. It's the beginning of the year and I'm saying the same thing. Get closer to the Lord. Focus on Him because He's the star of this entire show. It's about Him getting the glory. Um, Psalms 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still here doesn't mean just sit back. It means <laughs> watch. <laughs> watch this space. Check what God is going to do because it's going to be amazing. Know that I am God. He's about to show you who he is. He's about to show the whole world who he is.
right guys i'm sorry about the lighting it's about to rain so all the sun left <laughs> anyway the rest of the verse says i will be honored by every nation i will be honored throughout the world the lord of heaven's armies is here among us the god of israel is our fortress Praise the Lord. He will be honored among the nations. He will be glorified. Be still and let him do this thing. Focus on him. And in Psalm 91 verse 14 to 16, so beautiful, says, Because he loves me, because she loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue them. I will protect them, for they acknowledge my name. They will call on me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. That is your portion. Many things are going to happen this year. Some good, some bad. But God promises you that he will deliver you. He will protect you because you acknowledge his name. Because you focus on him. Because you have set your love upon him. Because you trust him. Shift your focus. It's 2021. We are no longer fighting the battles that we fought before, those personal battles. Now it's about the bigger picture. It's about the nations. It's about what you are called to do. It's about God's name being glorified amongst the nations in the world. Remember that. That is key for 2021. Friends, that's the word. I really pray that it's blessed you. It blessed me so much. It's released me of so much. It helped me realize just how paranoid I was. And I'm just encouraging you to not to worry about all those things. Yes, be sober. Yes, be vigilant. But focus on the Lord. Don't let the enemy use um, just silly things to keep you distracted. Sending you blind demons that can't even see. They don't even know what you have. God has hidden all of that from their sight. He's protecting you and you're worried about someone that could potentially steal from you, a demon that could steal from you. When Jesus came that you may have an abundant life and he is giving that to you now. Focus on that. Focus on that. I love that scripture that says, you know, God has given us um, authority or Jesus gave, gave us authority over serpents and scorpions. Um, but we shouldn't rejoice over that. We should rejoice over the fact that our names are written in the book of life. Focus on the good. Focus on what God is saying to you in terms of who he is and what he wants to do in your life. That's where the focus should be. Yes, we know the enemy exists. Yes, we know he has shenanigans. But we have power. We have authority. We use that power and authority and we focus. Shift your focus. Okay, friends, I've lectured you enough. I'm so excited for this year. Brace yourselves. It's going to be it's going to be good no matter what happens. It's all about perspective. It's all about how we face things, how we receive things. There's a lot of fear mongering right now. Um, we know what's happening in this world. Like I could do a whole video about that. And I probably should because some of these news reports, it's like so clear and so blatant that they're just trying to get people into the state of fear with their stats, which I don't think are 100% true. But anyway, that's a video for another day. This video is long enough. Friends, bless you. Thank you for just your love and your support for always being here. Thank you to everyone that has purchased my music that supported me so much last year. Thank you to everyone who um, sows into this ministry in whatever way, whether it's through prayer, financially, sending me a prophetic word every now and then. I just get so blessed by you guys so much. And um, I just really pray that I have been a blessing to you and that you know you've been able to to gain some knowledge in terms of interpreting your dreams yeah so that's it friends remember that you serve a wonderful loving father he's so good and you are so special to him <laughs>